Hi and welcome to this tutorial video about using the IFM Intelligent Vibration Sensor VNB211 along with the software VES004. Um, for those that have watched the previous tutorials regarding the VSE diagnostic modules, we still have the test project open here which we're going to use today. Um, if we wanted to create a new one, we would just click on Project, New, give the project a name and once we clicked OK it would add a blank project into here. Um, we then to add a device, device new, and it's a VNB two on one that we want to add. Okay, so we now need to see if we can connect to a VNB two on one if there's any that's on the system. So we can either right click and scan network, and it has found one. So if we highlight that, and this icon here, update the project with a selected device, and we can then either use the icon to connect to the device or within the software the right click mouse function does quite a lot over here as well and we can connect that way. So we've now made a connection we know because we have the green tick here and we now need we can look at the settings which is things like firmware and stuff, serial number, actions we can execute, uh, a self test which has succeeded but more importantly is the parameter set so double click on that to open up Common configuration allows us just again information about firmware and um, what the inputs and outputs are doing, documentation about who the customer is, where the machine is, who created the parameter set, etc. And if we then go on to the parameters, we're allowed to start putting in the inputs. So this is basically telling it what points we're going to have on the machine. So um, with the VNB2 on one, it will obviously work as a vibration sensor itself, but it has the ability to take in vibration measurements from a second accelerometer. It has to be part number VNA001 from IFM, which is a, a MEMS based accelerometer, or analog inputs from, say, temperature as well. So, my parameter set today is going to have the VNB2 on one on one fan and the VNA001 on a second fan. So if I just right click on dynamic inputs and it defaults to the internal, which is the, the sensor itself, the, the VNB, but if I just change that to fan one and it defaults to put a high pass filter of 10 hertz. So anything below 10 hertz, the sensor will just ignore and we'll create our second dynamic input, which it defaults because it knows it's the VNA. And if I just change that to fan two, and again, we've got the high pass filter of 10 hertz. Um, if we wanted to put temperature, that would be there, but we can only have one other measurement point in, so it won't allow me to do that now. So for the objects, right click, I'm going to set, we've either got RMS acceleration, RMS velocity, peak acceleration all in the time domain, looking for vibration problems, or upper and lower limit monitor are setting alarm points based on if we had an analog input coming in such as temperature, we can set yellow and red limits for those. Um, but I'm going to set an RMS velocity for both and change the VNB to fan 1. It's coming from the fan 1's internal sensor, this particular object. And if we go into processing, we have a low pass filter defaulting at 1000 Hz. And with the high pass filter on the sensor itself, that's giving us a 10 to 1000 Hz measurement range as per the ISO 10816 standard. And we then have the ability to change alarm limits here as well and how often the averaging takes place. Um, if I create a second object, which is the peak acceleration coming from fan one, and we'll just change the name to also relate to that. And the processing here defaults to a low pass at 6,000 Hertz, which is the maximum measuring range of the sensor. So this is 10 to one, 10 to 6,000 Hertz, sorry. That this will now monitor over but we can change that to put in high pass or even band pass filters as well and you just type manually type over here anything that, that you like but i'm going to keep that as the low pass it puts in some um default limits but again these can be changed just by typing over as well so i'm just going to do that for the second object so rms velocity on fan 2 so the RMS velocity is generally going to pick up things like unbalanced, misalignment, uh, looseness, 
that would tend to fall in the 10 to 1,000 hertz. So because we've set the, the low pass, um, the, the low end filter at 10 hertz, this is, is any machine that's 600 RPM and above. So if I just change that, and will also set the A peak as well for fan two. So the history with all those parameters, the, the default measurement intervals, five minutes, which is giving us 298 days, but we can just change those either by ticking each one individually and manually typing over, or if we want to change them all, we can just click on that top pencil and say every two minutes. And that is still giving us 119 days before it overwrites itself. And the alarms, we just right click new alarm, Warning gives us an overall yellow alarm for anything that's being monitored and will also set a, a damage alarm as well. So I can now go up the top here and this icon is right parameter to the device. And that's gone in because we can now we're already starting to get some values back here and we can see that we have a couple of parameters in green, one in yellow and one in red. And we now have beside the VNB in our data tree here, a red LED icon as well. So this is giving us an overall health status of anything that the sensors being monitored. So we got to write parameters to the device. If we're connecting to a sensor that was already on the machine and we wanted to see what's happening, read parameters for a device would let us get the parameters set out and look at values. We're able to compare locally on the PC with what's actually in the sensor as well. Reboot, perform a self-test. We can look at um, the data, so we're able to look at bar graphs. So we have the parameters, where the levels are, and where um, the, the alarm points have been set. So we can see from this, um, this is the fan 1 A peak and fan 2 A peak are both okay but um, the fan one has gone into the red alarm and fan two is yellow alarm. We're all just able to look at things like in a table view as well and look at the data moving across the screen live. So here's the, the two peak acceleration values and the two temperature values. Um, with these tabs, we can tick or add or remove the parameters. And if we highlight one of the axes, this one here allows us to do things like scaling as well. So we have looked at the monitoring window, if we want to tick on this it shows us what our inputs and outputs are doing. Um, open spectrum monitoring window, but we'll, we'll come back to that actually, we'll look at the, the time waveform. So this is showing the, the time waveform that's being generated by fan 1, if I want to change that I can show fan 2. Or go back. And if I want, I can make a recording of this also. So the, the software is now recording this time waveform. And if I stop that and save it, it puts it into my data tree here. Just make that small so it's neater. Um, and that can then be clicked on and played back, or if I want, I can actually right click on there and tick Spectrum. And what this does, if I play it, that's now playing the Spectrum that was created by that time waveform. So the, the VNB 2 on 1 can actually be used um, to, to grab raw data and do a bit more analysis. Um, with, with this also, we're able to, if I just hold the mouse and drag down, we can actually zoom in and see the different frequencies we can put on um, any of the objects that we want as well. So if I click on that, it gives us finds the peak and puts in where the different harmonics are. For an example, um, if I untick that, right click, unzoom, and we can see it all again. Um, we also have the ability to take out the history, and there won't be really be anything in it because we've not had it long enough, but. If you were to tick that, it would suck up the history from the sensor and once you click save, it would also put it in your data tree here. So and that concludes this tutorial video for the VNB 2-in-1 
working alongside a second measurement point and while showing some of the basics of navigating around the VES-004 software. Thank you for your time.